Alright guys, I'm back. This is crazy little, um, I think they're hawk moths or something. I don't know if you can see that. Keep buzzing around. They've got red wings. Never seen one before in my life. I'll see if I can get a photo. Um, I haven't got a macro lens on me today, but they are flying everywhere. It's beautiful up here today. Um, absolutely stunning. A bit cloudy, but actually the sun's come out. And uh, a little bit breezy. You can probably hear that in the microphone. Hopefully it's not ruining the sound too much. There goes one. Right there. Very windy. The thing there, I want to start to focus through it. There we go. I don't know if you can actually see that on the through the um, camera there. But, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I'll put that up on later anyway. So I shot at one eight hundredth of a second at f3.2 ISO 100, but there's literally a 20 mile hour wind, which isn't good. Right, so the Sony 7200 f4G lens. You've got many things on it. Um, you've got two modes. Um, that's your panning mode, so your steady optical. So if you've got um, usual stabilisation, and if you're panning, you can put it on number two. Obviously, steady shot on and off. I mean, the body's got stabilisation anyway, but it will use the lens op um, ideally. Um, from three meters to infinity on your focus range, and obviously full. I just don't leave it on full. Um, F. MF, so autofocus and manual focus. Your zoom ring, so 7200, and that's your um, focal ring. People, some people don't know what these buttons are for. Well, they're actually custom buttons. You can actually um, set them for, so you can have a movie button, so you can push that to record movies. Um, it's set up as a custom, uh, not a custom, a um, default button, as uh, disengage the focus, so you can literally do that and then go manual focus. Um, or if you've pre-locked it and you just push that and it disengages the focus system so you can you're you know fixed which um, makes a difference which is really cool um, the benefits I think with this lens over the G Master version is the, the lightness it's much smaller um, it's as sharp I'd say at f4 as the G Master um, I have used both um, it's definitely a weight difference I'm not sure exactly what it is um, it's one of those bucks again um, and uh, I just like this one because it fits in the bag, really compact, I've got the range. Depending on what you're shooting, you don't really need f2.8 unless it's low light, um, but I've got other lenses which will compensate for that. It's, um, but I managed to get this one for £800, it's now retailing back at about anywhere between 1000 and 1100 I think. Um, obviously I'm out here at the moment so I haven't really looked. but. Um, it's a nice lens, lovely. Same problem as all the other lenses. You get the issue of um, grime and dirt building up inside the um, on the, uh, the rubber grips there. Uh, I'm always out and about in the in the, uh, the dusty and wet areas normally, so either in the rain or sandy beaches and stuff like that. So or mud in the woods. Um, but fabulous lens to use. Really, really fast. Eye focus works really well. Um, so it's a good portraiture lens. I use it for products as well. So it's obviously 200 mil in the studio. You can um, obviously narrow down your angle, which is quite good for the product stuff. The only issue is the focus distance is not as close as you'd like. Um, I do find myself being too close, um, and it won't focus unfortunately. So you have to step back a bit, which is a little bit annoying. Um, that happens actually quite a lot. That's the only downside. I'm not sure what the G Master focal depth is like but um, I'll have a little read about that um, but that's just a quick insight into what the lens is like um, like I say it's worth putting a few scratch scratch resistant parts on um, I've noticed it gets a bit grubby
Oh, there you go. Not again, too close to it. Close. Oh, hi guys, um, back in the car now. It was a bit windy, so I don't know, I'm just recording another bit just in case um, it was a bit breezy earlier. So, um, out on the downs. So, yeah, basically driving back now um, across the marshes, which is um, the weather's a bit crap. It's just um, overcast, it's kind of fluffy clouds, but you know, it's a bit boring really. The lights are a bit rubbish, lack of sunshine. Um, but anyway, so I was up on the South Downs with the 70 to 200 um, G lens, and it's great. I mean, it's light. It's quite compact compared to the G Master version or the Sigma f2.8, which I had before. Um, that's a great lens, by the way. Um, that works, um, which I didn't know about, with the. LAE A3 adapter so you get all of your focus points and everything with that adapter if you've got that lens and you're thinking about going to Sony E-mount um, either the Canon or the, the Sony mount or probably the Nikon I suppose um, you can use it absolutely fine um, I sold one and bought the the, the Sony lens um, in a way I kind of miss the f2.8 but Looking at all the other lenses I have now, which I use for portraiture mostly, I don't miss it. Um, F4 works rather well if you are doing a bit of portraiture. F4, you know, and you're relatively close to the person, like a headshot or something like that. The depth of field is perfect. You you get you know the eyes, the nose, the sort of tips of the ears in focus quite nicely, and um, it's just just works. I use the uh, 7200 for products, um, things like that. So in studio sometimes with, you know, could be a, a hat, some clothing, something like that. So that works really well, you know, with a, something like, you know, something of you know, general good size. Because the only trouble I've found with the 7200 is it doesn't focus that close. So I think it's about one and a half meters. Um, so it kind of struggles a bit sometimes to get close enough to the, the subject if it's quite small. It's um, definitely worthwhile. It's quite expensive though for the money really what I think compared to say you can buy the, the Sigma um, and a LAE, LAE A3 adapter for I'd say probably now probably £400 less so you could have a really good sharp f2.8 7200 for that much money or even second hand because they've obviously been around a while now uh, the I haven't seen any of the Sony 7200 G, G lenses or the G Master lenses um, second hand at all anywhere so they obviously once you've got one you obviously like it and use it so um, it's very light compared to my Sigma which I had before and the G Master I have used the G Master in the shop just to see what it was like um, it just feels like there's nothing there it, it kind of feels like it's it's almost like an empty case compared to the G Master or even the Sigma which is you know if you want to keep your bag light that's kind of perfect really um, which I do nowadays getting a bit older <laughs> Um, you know, but you don't. You just don't want to carry the weight around with you. You know, I used to have a, a bag that weighed about 20 kilos, I think, when it was fully loaded. You know, if you're walking around out and about with that, you didn't really, um, you didn't really need it. You know, um, now I'm probably down to five kilos or six kilos. You know, most of the time, um, which is you know ideal. I do have a lot of primes now and a couple of zoom lenses, so I generally pack the bag for what I need. So if I know I'm going to do a job that's got some macro, some wide angle stuff, you know, I'll, I'll put that those lenses in and leave the rest behind. 
but the 7200 generally does go in as well um, but because it weighs hardly anything you know um, it, it doesn't really affect the affect the weight of the bag um, there's a bit of a squeeze in there but sometimes but um, you know it works uh, obviously a 35 mil Sigma uh, f1.4 lens um, I use in conjunction with that quite a bit so today that's what I had in the bag the a7r2 the f1.4 35 mil art lens from Sigma and the Sony 70-200G G lens um, the only thing I've had recently with the 70-200 was a few missed focus points but I don't really know if it was me being a bit retarded and not taking the pictures properly which it's kind of unlike me because I, I am you know pretty good I was just getting a couple of really not very sharp shots and it was just really bugging me and I don't know why and it was you know the shutter speeds were quick um, stabilization was on I don't know if the stabilization had a bit of a moment and didn't work properly um, I swapped to a different lens um, this is when I went to Wales so I was up on Snowdonia doing the um, the pictures of Jessica which I'll, I'll stick another picture in it just so you can see what what we were doing um, and uh, I was just not getting shot, you know, it just weren't sharp. I was just, it was doing my head in. Um, it just seems to be fine now. I just, yeah, I don't know, but well, maybe it was just having an altitude issue with being up the, up the half a mountain, but uh, who knows. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that because I don't know if anybody else has had an issue with the uh, with that lens at all, you know, doing doing a, you know, a bit of an issue. I don't know if anybody else has got one out there. Um, other than that, it's flawless. The stabilisation generally works very well. Uh, for video, it's very smooth. Uh, did um, a friend's wedding, videoed a bit of it, um, which is very smooth. Um, the only thing I've got, I don't know about um, anything else. I know a guy, Tim, on, on uh, Facebook, he's um, he's got one. He, he rates it highly. Uh, and I'm sure he'll probably comment underneath this video, um, or the link if it's on Facebook, about how, how good it is. Um, but it was a bit noisy um, when you zoom. So if it's 70 to 200 through there, it's a bit <sighs> sort of noise. I don't know if it just needs a bit of a clean. Christ, this road. Um, but I'll have a look at that. It just seems a bit noisy. It picks up on the microphone quite easily. I noticed that. Um, I don't suppose you can really get away with that too much. But um, it's always road works. And this road needs a complete resurface. It's terrible. Right, anyway, I'm just going to um, change the scenery, I think. I'll come back in a minute. Hi right, guys, back again. Right, now we're onto some nice country roads. Uh, enjoy this uh, lovely English countryside. Some of our roads around here, but well, the ones that aren't broken, are really, really nice to drive on. you catch up Sunday traffic obviously so yeah that was a bit of fun and they're obviously old and pissed because they're on the other side of the road which is um, a bit random but um, yeah I shall sit back here a minute and um, see anyway so beautiful countryside we've got around here um, and I love it absolutely love it it's one of the places even though I enjoy going to Wales and places like that and obviously different places around the world to visit beautiful scenes East Sussex seems to have a good variety of different things. Like we've got Beachy Head, which I've just been to, with the big cliffs and the, the sea views and everything like that, where people decide to, unfortunately, it's a big suicide spot, so people do decide to jump off it when they've had enough, um, which is not good. But hey, um, and obviously, you get the idiots who decide they're going to stand on the edge, which we've also seen, um, within, a, within less than a metre of the falling off a 600 foot drop. So, yeah, if you do that, you ain't coming back, that's for sure. But yeah, so um, just up here on the left-hand side, we've got a beautiful place called Ashburnham Place. It's um, like a, a religious retreat, but they open it to the public, and you can go and have teas and coffees and lunch uh, stuff there, which is um, really lovely. And the scenes down there, there's beautiful lake and, and woodland, and there's deer, and things like that in there. So um, I'll probably go in there one, one morning or something with the camera and have a look around. I am quite good terms with them. I've done some photography work with them before, um, so I might just... Uh, just give them a quick shout and see if it's okay to do a little lens review or something in there, which would be nice.
Here is a few more photos from East Sussex, Kent, sort of areas, um, just so you can see what, what else we have around here. This is just a small selection, so um, check the website out, which is www.sjm.photos for a good selection of uh, other things as well.